What does age to income, temperature to ice cream sales, and lines of code to number of bugs have in common? Well, you can predict them all with a straight line. Well, how you ask? It's quite simple. With some basic math and programming, we can create this machine learning model that is capable of predicting almost any linear pattern. I'll also cover concepts like gradient descent in this video, which is a very useful optimization algorithm uh, used in neural networks. That's, I think, going to be the next video, hopefully. Anyways, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Sneak. More on that at the end of the video. So let's get started with some straight lines. This is the equation of a straight line. We've all come across this before in our schools, and it's quite simple. It's just y equals mx plus b, where x and y are the coordinates for the uh, points of a straight line, and m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So tweaking these two variables in a 2D plane will alter how the line looks like. So m, which is a slope, is given by the equation rise over run. It mostly helps us change the angle of the line with respect to the axes, and the b, which is the y-intercept, which is the point at which the line cuts the y-axis. So this one basically helps us move the line up or down the plane, basically an offset from the origin. With these two variables, one can change the angle and the other can move the line up or down. So we can represent any straight line in a 2D plane. Pretty simple math. Now let's look at linear data. Linear data set is one which comprises of a set of inputs and outputs, and they are linearly correlated. So let's take a look at an example. Um, we'll use the advertising spent to the product sales as an example. So suppose you have a product X and you've tested uh, the advertising on this product. And uh, when you spend about $1,000 on advertising this product, you make back like $4,000, which is a profit of 3,000 bucks. Not bad, right? Hey, free real estate, I guess. Now let's say you've gathered all the data on how much you've spent on ads for each month for the whole year, and also the revenue that you've made back. So some months it could be $1,000 and then 500 or 2,000 bucks or whatever the number might be, you've recorded them all. Now, if you spend some time to plot this on a 2D plane, you'd see an interesting pattern. The correlation between the amount spent on advertising and the revenue that we made back gives you almost a straight line. You can see that by drawing a line that passes through all the points. And this is basically an example of a linear data set. Now, our main goal is to fit a straight line to any data set that is linear. So humans like you and me, assuming that you're not an AI, we humans can see the data set in approximately fit a good enough line just by having a look at it. And it's almost trivial, right? But doing the same for a large enough data set can be a hassle process. So we have to come up with some kind of an algorithm that fits a line to this data set or almost any linear data set. You can also call fitting a line as basically training in this context. Now, fitting a line simply means finding the right slope value and the y-intercept value to basically represent a straight line. So once we have these right values, we can plug in our new inputs, which will be, let's say, x, and get back our predictions. We'll call this one y. There are multiple ways to actually find the slope and the y-intercept values. Uh, the one that we are going to be using is called linear regression. Uh, we're using this to find the right values for m and b, which is the slope and the y-intercept, programmatically. So now I'm about to describe a high-level overview of this algorithm uh, before jumping into any sort of code so that, you know, y'all have some context of what's actually going on before we jump into any kind of code. All right. Here's how it goes. So assume that this is a linear data set and we wish to fit a straight line across this data set. So these points are going to be useful in our training. So initially, we start off with a random value for m and b. We can set that to like 1. And plugging in these values into the straight line equation would give us this line, which doesn't really look right, right? It's, it's not what we want. 
So now let's take a point in this wrong prediction and subtract it with the right or the intended value. And this kind of gives us the error. So basically, how far are we off from the goal? Now we do this for every single point in our data set and add up all the errors together. Finally, we run through all the data points one by one, slightly optimizing the values m and b, which is the slope and the y-intercept, based on this error. So we do this with the help of an algorithm called gradient descent. We do this for a few iterations until we get our best fit line. So there you go, that's how it works on a high level. So now let's actually try to fit a line to this advertisement to sales data set. By the way, all the codes that I'll be showing you in this video will be available uh, on my GitHub repository with some commented explanations and stuff. Uh, refer to that, links will be down in the description. With that said, let's jump right into some code. We'll start off with a simple function, uh, which is the equation of the line. This will definitely come in handy. So here's the function, takes in m, b, and x, which is slope, y-intercept, and the input, and returns mx plus b. Simple as that. Now here's the add spent to the product sales linear data set. So x here is the list of amount spent on ads for each month, and y is the uh, list of revenues for all those months after the products were sold. So I've added a small little downscaling factor to this data set simply because it's a lot easier to work with and it doesn't blow up my graphs and stuff. So yeah, that's that. All right, now it's time to fit the line to this data set. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll start with some randomly chosen line and assess how well it approximates to the original data set. Then we'll actually make some minor adjustments to optimize the line. Uh, and after a few iterations, uh, we should arrive at the uh, best fit line. So now that we have our data, it's time to find the error. So here's how the error function looks like. So basically we take the prediction y from our predicted line and subtract it with the y from the data set. So this will actually give us the offset, like how far are we off from the original data point. And sometimes this offset can be negative. A quick solution to fix that would be to square this number. We square it and not exactly put absolutes around it, simply because there's some problems with it, like differentiability problems and not being sensitive enough in this context, uh, which we're not gonna worry about too much in this, uh, in this case but I just wanted you to know that. Anyway, so that's how you actually calculate the error of a single point. And now we do the same thing for the rest of the points and calculate the overall error. We repeat this process for every single data point in the data set. And at the end, we add them all together and get a mean over it. So hence it's called mean squared error or MSE for short. Uh, in this context, the function uh, used to calculate this error is commonly known as the loss function in machine learning. So MSE or the uh, mean squared error can be called as a loss function. By the way, you don't actually need this function in our code. We can completely skip calculating this step and directly calculate the impact of slope and the y-intercept on the mean squared error and then optimize it there. But I just wanted to show you guys. Now that we have our data set for training, uh, let's actually jump into the most important bit, the gradient descent, where the optimization actually happens. So on a high level, this is how it works. We have a simple goal, and that is to find the right values for the slope and the y-intercept so that we can draw a straight line. Simple as that, right? And currently, our slope and the y-intercept values are set to 1. It could be anything, but 1 is decent, I think. And it gives us a wrong line. Not exactly wrong, but more like uh, not the best possible fit for our data. Yeah, actually, it's wrong. I changed my mind. It's, it's a bad line. Almost as bad as uh, uh, that Mortal Kombat movie. Too bad. <sighs> you will die, that one. Uh, anyways, it's a bad line, that's the point. So the most rational thing to do next would be to adjust the m, the slope, and the b, the y-intercept values, based on the mean squared error that we just calculated in the previous steps. So the idea is to nudge the values, the slope and the y-intercept values, little by little, such that it decreases the error over time, uh, which is the mean squared error. 
But how do we know which direction to nudge and how much to nudge the slope and the y-intercept values? Well, we need to find the rate of change for both the slope and the y-intercept with respect to the mean squared error. In simple terms, you need to find how much impact does the slope and also the y-intercept have on minimizing the overall error. Once we know this, we can nudge in the right direction and also the right amount to get the least error possible. Well, this all kind of makes sense, right? But the real problem is that how do we go about finding this rate of change that we're talking about? That's the real question. And that's where math comes in. Math to the rescue. Nobody ever says that, but that's exactly where the concept of derivatives are used for. Well, you could define derivatives as instantaneous rate of change. Well, basically calculates how much effect does a variable have with respect to another one. Exactly. If you think about it, this is exactly what we want. So assume that we have a function that looks like this and we want to find the rate of change at this point. So all we got to do is to draw a tangent line to this point and the slope of this tangent line, which is the rise of run, it's going to give us the rate of change. Simple as that. But the problem is that we can't draw a line through a single point in a 2D space. We need at least two points to draw a straight line. So a big brain move that humans came up with uh, was that to use two points and then move one point very close to the original one so that it almost becomes the same point. Essentially, we start with two points like a secant line and then call one point X and the other one X plus H. And now we try to calculate the slope, which is rise over run. Uh, the rise would be F of X plus H minus F of X because the rise is essentially the difference of y and the run would simply be the h. But this is the interesting bit. We add limits where h tends to zero. So kind of like one point tends to be the other. So for a simple function like x squared, if you plug this value into the equation, uh, we get 2x, uh, which is basically the rate of change. There you go. That's your entire year of high school math right there. And I'll take that $200 now. Thank you very much. Anyways, in our case of fitting a straight line, we're going to be using partial derivatives instead of the regular ones because we're dealing with multiple variables such as the slope and the y-intercept. So uh, let's, uh, let's calculate the partial derivatives now. We'll start with the equation of the straight line. Just to remind you, y equals mx plus b, that's how it looks like. Uh, the equation of the MSC or the mean squared error looks like this. It's simply a sum of all squared errors and then taking a mean of it. And finally, we replace this y with the equation of the straight line. So MSC becomes this equation right there. Beautiful. Now we need to take partial derivatives of MSC with respect to both the slope and the y-intercept. So let's start with the slope one. If we differentiate this MSE equation with respect to the variable m uh, using the chain rule, the results will look something like this. And similarly, if we do uh, the differentiation on the MSE equation with respect to the variable b using the same chain rule, we get this equation. By the way, I use two new words here, differentiation and chain rule. Differentiation is simply the process of uh, finding the derivatives. And the chain rule is sort of like a clever tool in calculus that helps us differentiate composite functions or functions like that are one inside the other. Have you seen those uh, Russian dolls where you open a doll to find another one and then you open another doll to find another one? Another one. Another one. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Uh, it's just like that, like opening one nested doll inside the other and figuring out how the inner doll impacts the outer one. Anyways, now all there's left to do is to simply translate all the steps that we just discussed into code. So here's how it goes. We initialize the slope and the y-intercept to be one. It could be random values, but one is decent enough. Uh, next, we create a variable called learning rate, which represents the amount of adjustments that needs to be made and we'll assign it a very tiny value. So we also create another variable to specify the number of iterations uh, required to optimize and uh, fit the best possible line. Uh, we set it to a thousand uh, for now. Uh, probably you don't need that much, but who cares? Who cares, brother? Who cares? 
Next, we iterate and find the partial derivatives with respect to both the uh, both the variables m and b. And finally, we adjust these two values slightly based on the learning rate. And after a thousand iterations, we'll have a pretty good approximation for the slope and the y-intercept. And then we can finally plug these values uh, into the straight line equation and boom, you have a linear regression model trained on a linear data set and ready to predict new values. Pretty cool, right? Now you can use this model to create consciousness and take over the world. Anyways, at the beginning of the video, do you remember that I said you could predict any kind of linear data with this model? And one of the examples was number of bugs to lines of code. There is usually some kind of uh, correlation between the lines of code and the number of bugs in the uh, code base. But of course, that's just a simplistic analysis because it depends on a lot of other factors. It's, it's sort of a multivariable problem. As it turns out, today's sponsor Snake has kind of already solved this issue for you guys. So Snake uses proprietary AI that continuously learns from billions of lines of code uh, to assess your projects and scan its security in depth. So I personally use them in some of my important projects. Uh, best part is that it's free. So uh, go check those guys out. They do some great work. Links are going to be down in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Have a good one. Peace.